It's good to be back in one of the fastest growing counties in the United States of America, Polk County. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we're here. We've got a, a bill signing, uh, some, some good announcements. We have our uh, Department of Transportation Secretary, Jared Perdue, here, Florida Turnpike Director, and Nicola LaCorre is here today. Uh, we also have, I think, Representatives uh, Amnesty, and I saw Bell, I saw Senator Burton. Do we have any other legislators here? Is that that? Okay, so appreciate you guys. And then we're going to hear from Jeremy Barnes, Operation Manager, Sable Transport, Inc. So we've done a lot on transportation. We've done a lot on roads. We've also done a lot on trying to help commuters. So last week, or actually this week, earlier, I was able to announce starting April 1st, uh, we are going to be doing a 50% reduction in all tolls for our commuters. So that's something we did in 2023, which is very helpful, of course, especially as things continue to be expensive from groceries, uh, gas, uh, oils back up. And so, you know, we're bracing for, for potentially higher gas prices. So there's a lot of, of things that are happening that I think has put a big crunch on a lot of folks. So this program, especially in certain parts of the state where you have a lot, I mean, I think people in central Florida, certainly South Florida, there's a lot, but we also have tolls that people do every day going into the Panhandle, uh, Santa Bella, all these different places. Tampa Bay has some. So people say, well, okay, that's great, 50%, you know, what do I do? And the answer is, you do absolutely nothing. All you have to do, if you have that transponder, you go, you have to do a certain number of tolls because we wanna make sure we're focusing on Florida commuters. And if people are in central Florida that are you know, just in SeaWorld for the week, like, like fine, they pay the toll, right? I mean, we wanna, we, we'll, we'll do that. So all you have to do is uh, look at your statement in May and you'll have whatever tolls you've racked up in April, you'll see 50% taken off on your statement. And that'll happen every month uh, for the next year. So I'm, I'm excited that the legislature uh, did that again. That was uh, something that we had proposed uh, really at, at the end of 2022 when we did a special legislative session. And then this year we had a big tax package uh, and this was something that was really important to me to be able to go, be able to help our commuters. So, you know, if you're commuting in a high toll area, uh, people are saving uh, hundreds of dollars a year on tolls uh, because of this program. And some even more than that, because some people have to spend a lot of money on tolls. And it's just, it's just crazy what ends up happening. So, so that's something that's really, really positive. The other thing that I think is positive is what we're going to do, the announcement today, the bill signing. This really brings, uh, we were in Polk County in 20, a year ago, a little more than a year ago, announcing our Moving Florida Forward initiative because we recognize that Florida continues to lead the nation in net in-migration. Um, I know NBC tried to say that that, would be, that would means a lot of people were leaving. I don't know how they did that. Um, <laughs> Honestly, like we, I don't necessarily, I mean, like we've got a lot of people coming. So, but so that creates, it's, there's benefits, but there's also challenges to that. And so I don't go out there begging people to come. I think it's just people vote with their feet. So we just have to recognize that reality and look and say, okay, uh, you have a state that's growing, particularly in this region of the state. And we want to make sure we get ahead of that. We already have traffic congestion that is uh, really, really uh, bad in many parts of the state. Uh, are we just going to say that, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, you know, 15 years from now or 20 years from now, or do we want to do something to make an impact now? So uh, we decided to pursue the Moving Florida Forward initiative, uh, and we're taking billions and billions of dollars that we have available to us because Florida's run big budget surpluses uh, all every year. Uh, the biggest surpluses in the state's history have happened over these last five years. We've paid down 25% of our state's debt. We've cut taxes in record amounts, but yet we say, okay, well, what should we do? You know you're gonna have to do a lot of these road projects anyways, so we might as well get it done and, and start now. So we propose moving Florida forward, multi-billion dollar infusion of money uh, into our transportation program to identify some of the key areas uh, that need to see these projects accelerated. And if you look here, I mean, just think about uh, the Census Bureau last month said Florida has four of the five fastest growing metro areas in the country. 
the villages is the fastest growing, not surprising. Uh, Lakeland Winter Haven is number two. Uh, Ocala and Port St. Lucie are fourth and fifth. So the only other state that has a place is Myrtle Beach is number three uh, of the top five. So, so that's what we see uh, is happening. So uh, you see some of the uh, things that, that were going to be done, but the whole moving Florida forward, it's not just this part of the state. Uh, we just broke ground on a project down in South Florida that's going to be really, really significant. You look in Southwest Florida, you look in Tampa, Panhandle's got projects, uh, even down um, on, on the Treasure Coast area in, in that part. So, so this is a statewide, and this is in addition to what was already in the hopper. So there are things that are being done anyways uh, that were always scheduled to be done. These are all projects that are being accelerated to times much faster than what they would otherwise do. Uh, so, so we're excited about that. And, and, and how, what does that acceleration mean? It means some of these projects uh, are gonna be started and or completed 10 to 20 years ahead of schedule in some instances. Uh, so that's a really, really big deal, especially when you start talking about some of the areas in Polk County, you look at Osceola, uh, you know, Champions Gate, these areas, these have been problem areas and what, you're just not gonna have any project even start for another 10 or 15 years? That's not gonna do the trick. Uh, so, so that's what really I think we're making a big impact on here today. So uh, we did the money last year. We needed legislation to be able to bring moving Florida forward into a landing this year, and we have been doing that. So uh, I'll sign the bill here momentarily after we hear from some other folks, uh, but we are very much committed to relieving congestion on our streets. I just think it's really important. You know, there's some people, um, some activists, they want to produce more congestion because they don't want people driving. So their way is to try to make commuting so miserable that you abandon your cars. But that's not gonna happen in Florida. You can't do that in the summer. What are you gonna do? You know, just, just what, what do, so you have to do that. Um, so we wanna make sure that these con the congestion is relieved. Um, and we are starting that now. So, so today I can announce that 14.7 miles of I-4 widening from US 27 in Polk County through Champions Gate to the Osceola Parkway in Osceola County um, will begin construction this year. Uh, and that's something that's... Uh, So if you think about, if you look at that, just look at the difference uh, for what you're doing in terms of being able to have capacity uh, on these key parts of I-4. And you'll see, I mean, there's some places in this country, maybe even in Florida, where you, you don't have traffic except at rush hour. And then rush hour can be really bad, but if you go at like noon or whatever, or maybe on a weekend in the middle of the afternoon, not as bad. Well, some of these I-4 spots, it doesn't matter you could end up bumper to bumper. Uh, odd times when there's not even uh, commuting. And so that has an impact on families, has impact on commerce. So, so that is gonna make a huge, huge difference uh, to have such a wider uh, uh, lanes, but also being able to manage the shoulder better so that if there is, a, if there is an accident, they actually have more space here to be able to do uh, what, what needs to be done. So this is going to may be a massive expansion of lanes. Uh, you know, you are gonna have express lanes uh, that, that are gonna be available uh, as well. Uh, widen shoulders for emergency uh, evacuations, as I said, and then there will be uh, uh, interchanges that are gonna be reworked uh, to reduce backup and queuing along various ramps. Now, prior to moving Florida forward, this project was 20 years away from getting started. Uh, and I'm here to say that uh, that's not, that was not good enough for us. So we're happy to start this 20 years ahead of schedule, which is really, really good. Um, so there's a lot of stuff uh, that is going. Uh, some of these projects kind of uh, uh, go together. So one of our great projects is the Point Sienna Parkway Connector. Um, now this had not even been funded. We got funding in the budget uh, most recently. Projected construction date 
uh, was 2034. Now, thanks to our efforts this session, FDOT stepped up to the plate and has adjusted the project schedule to get the work done as quickly as possible. Um, they're gonna split it in two phases. The 65% of the work will get started as part of the I-4 widening efforts, which is gonna be very soon, um, later this year. And then the remainder will start once that is complete and then they can funnel that in. But if you look at, um, for those of you who've been in this area, uh, you know, that's, that's not a, that's a, that's a bottleneck. So you're going to have, uh, this connector is going to make all that run much smoother. Uh, this is going to make a big, big difference, going to be easier to get around this area, uh, as a result of doing that. So, so we're excited about that project. And that's something that I know a lot of people here in the community have worked very, very hard. So this is really, really good stuff. And think about it. You have some states that are running massive deficits. Uh, massive deficits in some of these states. They're raising taxes in some of these states. We're cutting taxes, paying down debt, running surpluses, and at the same time, we're doing a massive infusion of money to be able to accelerate these infrastructure projects. So, Now, part of this reason we want to do it is we don't think waiting in traffic is, is good for people, uh, particularly people that have families. They want to get back and, and do that. Uh, it, it, it takes away time. I mean, if it's harder to get to the office, you know, how much are you going to be there, all this? Um, the commerce going through and from these lanes, I know we're going to hear in a minute, but uh, it's not good for commerce to have the, these backstops. So, so this, this is a, a big investment, uh, total cost of all this is in the billions of dollars when you look at what we're doing statewide to accelerate, but we're going to reap financial benefits on the back end of this. I mean, in productivity, family, uh, and then moving, being able to move goods around commercially. So, so this is really smart, I think, what we're doing. And you know, um, I can tell you we're going to continue to do well in Florida. That's going to attract people. And even though I don't have control over what they're doing in other states, my sense is some of the states that have done a lot of stupid things are going to keep doing a lot of stupid things. And that means more people will try to escape here. So we got to be ready for that. And this is what we're doing. So the bill I'm going to sign today is House Bill 1301. Um, it, it provides what we need to bring moving Florida forward in for a landing. But what it also does is it, it codifies what is the goal of our transportation system here? It's to reduce congestion, support supply chain, promote quality of life, and to make sure that your money is spent wisely and efficiently. That is different from what the federal government is doing under the Biden administration. I mean, they really view the transportation department and these projects as a tool for them to advance ideology. And, and that just does not work. Um, you know, they've, they've talked about roads being racist. I don't know how they get that, but they say that. <laughs> they talk about things like this. That's not what this is about. And of course, they do have an agenda to, to not have people uh, in their cars. Uh, we don't want to do that. Now, there are potentially local governments throughout Florida who may share that vision, particularly being anti-commuter and even wanting to close lanes so that people are so miserable that they just abandon commuting altogether. Um, this bill institutes comprehensive public meeting and voting requirements on local and regional planning and transit agencies. So it is going to prevent localities from agenda motivated lane reductions to force people out of their cars. I think that is important policy for the state uh, to get behind. We're also not going to reward any transportation agencies that violate some of the protections we have in Florida that have been enacted now um, against medical authoritarianism, such as mask mandates. Like you had to wear a mask to be on these uh, buses because of what the federal government was doing back when this was like no one else was doing it anywhere, but yet if you were on that, you had to do it. Now we sued and won in, in court on the aviation mandate, mass mandate, uh, but they still had it on this. And so we want to make sure that people uh, can travel in ways uh, that, are, that are good for them and good for their families. Uh, we also want public transit providers to be held accountable for overhead, for administrative costs, uh, making sure that they're not doing this window tinting on the buses 
so that people can't look in and see that nobody's on the buses and the ridership is very low. That's a trick. We're not doing it. And we are not allowing any state funding to go to any of these public transit authorities to put this wrap around the buses to try to promote an ideological agenda. You know, you want to promote DEI, you are not doing it with Florida taxpayer dollars. And so this is really, I think, important. I think it's going to be good. And um, we're, we're under budget and we're ahead of schedule on this. Uh, we have funded the things that we've needed to fund. Now, I hope we don't have inflation continue infinitum because that's made a lot of our projects we've done over the last three years more expensive than they otherwise would be because it's more expensive to build things, uh, whether that's roads, whether that's what homeowners are, are facing. That's just the reality. So hopefully uh, that gets in working order across the United States of America. But I'm excited to be here for this. I think that this is something, uh, there's a lot of states. I mean, how long does it take some of these other states to do some of this stuff? So we are moving forward. Uh, we're gonna make sure that we're putting our money where our mouth is. And we do believe that we wanna get this done as quickly as humanly possible. So, so you see this, you see some of the stuff in uh, moving the moving eye for, uh, forward. Uh, you see what the lanes are gonna do. You see Point Siena there. I mean, that's gonna make a big, big difference. I mean, there's a lot of uh, traffic in that area. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And again, that's just one part, one part, one insert of a whole state where this program is really moving forward in a really, really positive way. So uh, way ahead of schedule, and uh, there'll be some of these projects that, are, that end up being completed before they were originally scheduled to even start. And, and that's something that I think is really, really good. Okay, we're gonna hear from, uh, from Jared Perdue, uh, then Turnpike Director LaCorey, and then we'll hear from Jeremy Barnes. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your leadership, not only in strengthening our transportation system through the Moving Florida Forward initiative, but also for bringing back another year of toll relief and signing this great bill today, which gives FDOT the additional tools we need to continue being a national leader in transportation. The Moving Florida Forward infrastructure initiative is truly historic for so many reasons, and it all started with a bold vision from Governor DeSantis to solve the I-4 traffic congestion issue, and many other issues throughout the state. It took action from the Florida legislature to approve a historic funding package, and now FDOT will answer the call and begin construction on all 20 projects within the next four years. This is how government is supposed to work. Everyone working towards a common goal, putting people first. Transportation has a huge impact on quality of life for all of our communities, and because of the governor's leadership and the action by the Florida legislature, we can officially say today that we are investing nearly $2.5 billion directly into the I-4 corridor. Thank you, governor. As you heard from the governor, this initiative is launching a complete revamp of the I-4 that so many of you have known for years that we've all been stuck in traffic and probably the governor himself has been stuck in that parking lot. It includes a whole new option, which you heard from the governor on with the Point Siena connector. State Road 429, I-4, and the Point, Point Siena Parkway will now be fully connected, providing a new option for commuters. This would not have been possible without the additional investment from this session of nearly a billion dollars to finish out funding for the Moving Florida Forward initiative. Construction will begin soon on the first segment and it's important to highlight that the size, scope and complexity of the work on I-4 is truly historic, which is why we have established a new team of FDOT experts exclusively dedicated to delivering this infrastructure over the next several years. I'm also thankful to the legislature, especially our bill sponsors, Representative Shane Abbott and Senator Nick DeSigley for continuing to prioritize transportation policy. The bill being signed today enacts key policy changes for the department. Most notably, the bill includes a focus on Florida's supply chain, which directs $15 million towards Florida's intermodal logistics centers, provides the final bonding authority and financing tools to make all 20 moving Florida forward projects a reality, and ensures that transportation entities funded with state resources are compliant with COVID mandate protect protections that are now signed into law. In Florida, we will continue to fight for Floridians' freedoms, 
and keep transportation from being politicized, while the Biden administration continues to prioritize political ideologies over moving people and goods, I'm grateful we have a governor and a legislature who are focused on delivering actual infrastructure that improves Floridians' quality of life. Having this support from our state's leadership is exactly why I recently testified in front of Congress and why Florida joined a lawsuit that challenged USDOT's overreach with their greenhouse gas rule. This rule would have forced FDOT and local partners to monitor, track, and report tailpipe emissions in Florida. I'm happy to share that Florida and the 21 other states came out victorious, and the courts agreed that this was clear overreach of authority by USDOT, and the rule has been vacated. <laughs> Under Governor DeSantis's leadership, Florida will continue to protect the freedoms in our great state. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, for the opportunity to be here today to highlight so many Im important infrastructure announcements. As the executive director for FDOT's Turnpike Enterprise, it's encouraging to know that we have a leader like Governor DeSantis who champions investments in our transportation infrastructure and prioritizes the people that we serve every day. Florida's Turnpike Enterprise takes great pride in the customer service that we provide to Florida's communities, and our team is excited to deliver another year of toll relief to our customers. The toll relief program provides commuters with at least 35 toll transactions a 50% toll credit on their account. As the governor mentioned, you don't have to do anything other than use your transponder. These frequent users of toll systems around the state will automatically receive the account credit to their SunPass or other Florida-based toll account. Last year, under this program, over 1.2 million users received this benefit, many right here in Central Florida. And this year, with all of the people moving to this area, we hope to see some new SunPass users take advantage of the program. The governor and Secretary Purdue are not only focused on saving our families money, but also on alleviating congestion, both of which are impactful to our quality of life. These Moving Florida Forward projects along the I-4 corridor are highly anticipated by our communities, and the funding received this session to officially move the Point Siena connector forward will be a significant addition to the robust transportation network here in Central Florida. Thank you, Governor DeSantis. Thank you, Secretary Perdue. And thank you to the Florida legislature for trusting in FDOT and Florida's Turnpike Enterprise to be part of giving back to Florida's communities and moving our state forward. I'd also be remiss if I didn't give a big thanks to our team at Florida's Turnpike Enterprise who did an amazing job implementing last year's successful toll relief program. And it is our great pride to be able to, to continue that program this year. Thank you. My name is uh, Jeremy Barnes. I'm an operations manager at Sable Transport in Bartow. Uh, Governor, I appreciate you having us here today. Uh, my wife's best friend, Lori Albritton, with the uh, FDOT office in Bartow, called me a couple days ago and asked for a trucker's perspective on using I-4 on a daily basis. <laughs> I didn't realize my rant would land me here today, but <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but it's an honor to be asked to speak about those challenges uh, and learn about these projects uh, that, are, that are put in place to correct them. A little history about Sable Transport. Uh, we've proudly served the state of Florida for over 40 years. We're even named after the state tree. Uh, we mainly operate on intrastate Florida lanes, a uh, large service footprint utilizing the I-4 corridor. Uh, the I-4 corridor is now home to over 400 distribution centers. Particularly over the last five years, we have seen I-4 transit times dramatically increase, causing substantial loss in a truck's productivity and efficiency. Equally important in our industry is added driver fatigue and frustration that could create safety issues and constant congestion. Economically speaking, these deficiencies result and increased rates for the shippers, which ultimately 
trickle down to the consumers when they purchase the goods on the trucks. We at Sable, and especially speaking for our fantastic drivers, are thrilled to learn about this project and to get I-4 flowing again as it was intended. Doing so will help our industry keep shipping rates competitive and provide a safer environment for our drivers and those around them. Again, I appreciate you having us here and look forward to seeing this project get underway and completed. Great. Collins is here. Did you just get here? Okay, yeah, Senator Collins. Um, so we're going to, uh, so anyone that wants to come up for this, uh, we'll make it official right here. Well, thanks, everybody. We're excited to be able to make uh, great progress and really continue to get things done. And this is really across the board. If you've looked, um, we're doing stuff on transportation, toll relief, accelerating these projects, do it, doing it right. If you look at what we've done on, um, you know, we recently signed legislation on a variety of, uh, of other key topics, the squatters issue where people are taking over homes, done in the state of Florida. We took care of that. Uh, we're going to be signing in uh, to law uh, a bunch of bills to continue to make Florida safe from, from crime, whether it's retail theft, all these others. We've got a lot of conservation and environmental things, tax relief, uh, you name it, uh, we have an ability to do it. So we're, we're really excited about all that we've been able to do this year, and, and the best is, is still yet to come. Sir, anybody? Yeah. displayed on its website. So can you expand on some of the comments you made about being a, a covert? Um... First of all, it's an illegal program. They're bringing people in who don't have a right to be in this country from foreign countries. And what we've seen... <laughs> and we saw this instance recently. Someone that Biden flew into America, ended up in Massachusetts, now is under charges for sexual assault against a developmentally disabled 14-year-old girl. Now, that is something that would have been prevented had they just followed the law. We've been after them on this parole for a long time. We've actually won in court, uh, and it's our hope that we're gonna be able to get that shut down. Now, it is secret because they're not telling anybody, they don't tell us anytime somebody comes in. You know, the, I know there was numbers about who's coming through Miami. I, what I can tell you is we can't verify that, they don't give us any information on it. Uh, we have not seen, though, large numbers um, in our communities all of a sudden, like you've seen in New York and Chicago and some of these other ways. And so that may be the case that he's bringing people in under this illegal parole program, and then they're migrating to sanctuary jurisdictions. That could be happening, but I could tell you we're not a sanctuary state. Uh, we don't have sanctuary cities, and we've took action to where you're not getting a driver's license, you're not getting ID cards, so you are better off in New York or Illinois or California. So that may be what you're saying, but it's secret in the sense, yes, we know the program's going on, we're suing over it. We think it's illegal. We know it's illegal and not constitutional, but they are not 
coordinating with state government at all. If they throw six people on a commercial flight uh, coming from a foreign country, there's no uh, acknowledgement at all uh, to state or local authorities. That's just the fact. And so that's why, that's a double reason about why what he's doing is, is very problematic. Um, I will say also, so we have not seen large numbers released into our Florida communities, because we would see evidence of that if that were the case. Uh, we have also not seen a large uptick in vessels coming from, from Haiti, which uh, we are, we're on guard against. So we've got a lot of flotillas out there deterring that from happening, and I think it's been successful so far. I am concerned, though, that, that Biden can try to just simply decide he wants to fly a bunch of people from Haiti to different parts of the United States, maybe Guantanamo, maybe someplace uh, on the continental United States. I don't think he has the authority to do that either, uh, but we have the only state that has actually consistently won on this parole issue, and we're gonna keep at it uh, until the Constitution is respected. Mentioned that uh, drivers on I-4 between Tampa and Orlando uh, regularly experience stoppages and extreme slowdowns. When these projects are finished, will they? Do you think there no, no, no longer will be those stoppages, or is it just a matter of keeping up with the expected? I, I think they'll improve. I mean, I think when you're talking about a very populated area, fat, one of the fastest growing parts of the entire United States, um, part of it is to mitigate what's what's happening to make it better. But there is a component of it that just to keep your head above water if we continue to have this population growth. So I think it's a combination uh, of both. Uh, I looked at it and said, we have all this money. We've cut all these taxes. We've paid down this debt. We've got this big surplus. And even with all the moving Florida forward, tax relief, everything, we're forecasting probably $16 billion plus in reserves. To put that in perspective, when I became governor, uh, the forecast my, my first year was like $5.7 billion in reserve. So that's triple of what it was five and a half years ago. Uh, and so we said, yes, you've got to do this because you, you can't wait 10 or 20 years for it. So I do think when all this is done, I think it'll be better than it is now for sure. But I also think that there's going to be more, more, probably more people on the roads uh, in three years and five years uh, than there are now. That's just the nature of it. And it's not us begging for people to come to this state. I don't do that. I don't go out and, and say, because I just it, it just, it is what it is. It's a free country and people can, can kind of vote with their feet if they want to, but we just know uh, the, the stats on this and it's been very, very strong. And look, we've t talked with, with the sheriff about, with, with Grady about, public order and public safety. That's a huge reason why people are moving to different places. And so they know they come to Polk County. Um, and I put, put out on, on social media yesterday, because uh, Grady did a clip uh, about this squatter stuff. And we're now empowering the sheriffs you know, to get these squatters off your property. And just imagine trying to squat in Polk County. I would not want to do that <laughs> and have to mess with Grady. So. Well, I'll let Jared correct me, but I mean, I think it's being built like that. That is not something that has been been done, obviously, in terms of Tampa to Orlando. But I think I think they're making it so that it could be done. Um, and then did you want to address the other part? Yeah, thank you, Governor. You did a great job with that. So we've basically reserved the space for rail in the future as part of planning. And then with regards to the express lanes, they're going to be throughout the entire limits of this I-4 reconstruction project. And uh, on, the, on the train, uh, it's, it goes from Miami to Orlando now. It's privately funded. I mean, we are not going to be on the hook as the state with taxpayers for, for doing trains. Uh, you've seen what's happened in California. How is it that California, they have a train to nowhere. They've spent tens of billions of dollars for no results. We now have from Miami all the way to Orlando at basically no very little cost to the state. I mean, there's different things, infrastructure tangentially, you know, that, that you, but, but actual paying for operation or construction, not nothing. 
and yet uh, that, that was probably billions of dollars, and they were able to get this going uh, from there. So it's just a different way of doing business. If they proceed with that, uh, there is a corridor to be able to do that, um, and, but it's not going to be Florida taxpayers constructing a, a train. I can, I can be, be clear on that. Yes? Does it? Yeah, it does, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it does all. It, it does all these different transportation authorities, both local uh, and regional. And I think it's going to lead to a lot of accountability. Uh, I think when you see state funds being expended on virtue signaling, on wraps on buses, no, I don't want your tax dollars. When when tax dollars are being spent, you got to think of it. You're literally going into someone's pocket and taxing them. And so can you look that taxpayer in the eye and say, yeah, you need to kick in a little bit more money uh, so that some county can, um, can go on some ideological joyride on their buses? No, we're not going to do that. So I, I think it's good. I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's accountable, and that's what we need. All right, thanks, everybody. Great to be back here in Polk County.